Hey guys, it's Craig with Squappy's Videos, and today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the storage on this, and then we're gonna install FreeNAS, or should I say, TrueNAS Core. So, what we have here, this is a Dell rack-mounted server. It's actually the R220. Um, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this front panel off here. We're gonna actually unhook it and get some things going on it. So we're gonna slide this open, take this plate off, let you all see here. So we actually have the DVD drive here, which we're not gonna need right now. We have a 300 gigabyte drive here, and then under this DVD drive, we have another 300 gigabyte drive. Um, now, this is not gonna be my, pre my primary server, but I am gonna just try getting it up and running. Honestly, I haven't done free NAS on here yet. But what I have are these. I actually have a whole stack of one terabyte hard drives. I'm gonna get the hard drives that are in here out and then we're gonna go ahead and get the other drives in. Um, now, this card I have here, it's no longer a RAID card, but this is actually now Flash 2 is an IT mode card. So this will make this compatible with TrueNAS Core. Uh, but let's go ahead and get that started here, okay guys? Don't mind my, my setup here, guys. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and power on the server. We should see it pop up into here. So it's actually configuring the memory. Oh, and I dropped the monitor. I don't have any stand for this uh, this monitor, so like I said, don't mind this, uh, this setup. Now, the table here is a workbench with two servers on top of it. Hmm. Random keyboard and a random monitor. So I want to actually make sure that we got Boots to the right drive I don't know why I hit F2 to go to the setup So Just escape that Yes, I'm sure I want to exit I'll just let it boot back up this time I'll actually go ahead and select the F11 to pick the right boot drive. Let's hope I picked the right one because I got two flash drives in here that look exactly the same and read exactly the same too. Sorry, I'll hit the boot manager first. 
There it is. All right, so BIOS boot menu. Make sure it boots the right flash drive that I want it to. So I have it in the uh, I have the installer in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and select the back USB drive. Look at that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit one to boot the TrueNAS installer. And uh, this monitor is a little funky, but no big deal. We don't even really need it for this guy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and here's the console setup. So we're gonna go ahead and hit install slash upgrade. So we're not gonna install it on either one of these drives, but that's good. So it does see the two one terabyte drives. We're gonna go ahead and actually get it installed on this other flash drive, which is in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Oops, okay. Oh, I'm gonna hit space to select it and then hit enter. Yep. All right, we're going to go ahead and delete it. And let's get a password on this. All right, we've got a password on it. Let's just do BIOS. I have a feeling this will do a UEFI uh, boot, but we're going to just do a BIOS boot for now. This might take a little while. So as you see, TrueNAS installation on DA3, which is the front USB drive. I know you guys probably can't read this because of how far I have the camera, sorry. Uh, it says that it has succeeded. So please reboot and remove the installation media. So we're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna just shut down the system. I got that removed. I'll leave the other media that has it installed at the front. We're going to see if we can just put this to boot right into it. All right, so we're gonna just let it auto boot here. It's awesome. So it does read the host bus adapter and the two SAS drives there.
It says this is going to take a long time, of course. So now we won't be able to go ahead and get the UI here. What we'll have to do is we'll, once this is fully booted up, we'll get the IP address, and then we'll have to actually, we'll have to log in with uh, my computer upstairs, which then you'll get to see my beautiful face. And I'll even do some screen recording for that, guys. Now this will not be my primary server. It's actually going to be one of the guy, one of the ones that's sitting here, which is going to be the Dell uh, R710. But I don't have those ready to go yet. For those, I got you know I want to make sure memory's all configured the way I want it, and I have the right drives in there. All right, let's boot it up. So what we'll do, we'll go upstairs, get connected to that uh, IP address. We'll finish up the setup. See you guys in a minute. All right guys, so as you can see, we are now here at TrueNAS Core. Welcome to your new NAS. Um, so this is that same server that's just downstairs. I wanted to go ahead and just get this going here so we'll go ahead and click on get started as you can see actually both ethernet uh, adapters are actually showing up uh, on here which is actually good I only have one of them connected right now it's all I really need right this second eventually when I try setting up my servers I am going to have them on the dual ethernet connected as well as the other server also has two power supplies in it uh, as re uh, for re redundancy and everything so um, at this time, the CPU is reading. It looks like we have an E3-1270. Uh, it's running at 3.5 gigahertz. Um, oh, excuse me. I'm hot. Um, memory, it is reading at 15.8 gigabytes, which does go ahead and coincide with what's in there. It is an ECC RAM uh, overall, so uh some of it is already being used up from of course zfs cache and uh, some of the services so as you see we are on a generic platform i should be able to go ahead and change that but uh maybe in a little bit version is tw uh true nas 12.0 release so that actually just recently came out uh earlier this week and as you see it's been up for about 13 minutes so let's see if we can get a storage pool set up Oh, excuse me. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. All right. So as you see, both of the disks are being seen. So let's go ahead and add a storage pool. We're gonna go ahead and create a new pool. Create pool. We'll just go ahead and name this R220. We're gonna go ahead and take both of those. We can set them to either mirror or stripe across one another. Um, Yeah, so as you see, you can have both of these basically read as one one disk in a stripe format. Um, there's no redundancy in that regard, as it says right here on the screen. Most people will go ahead and say, well, Craig, you should just do a mirror. Well, 
Yeah, but that's only one one terabyte of storage. I'm gonna go ahead and actually just do a stripe because honestly, right now this is just a temporary setup. I've never done a stripe setup anyway, so let's go ahead and just hit create. And it's telling me all of the contents on the disk will be erased. That's fine, these all should be blank anyway. So all right, it's gonna format, and there we go. That was quick. So now it's saying that R220 uh, is showing up as a file system to show about 1.76 terabytes should be available. So that is good. So let's actually add the options. Make sure everything's good here. All right, cool. Let's actually go to sharing. Go ahead and add a Windows share. So I'm going to just leave this at default. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. I'm going to tell it to start automatically. Awesome. And I do use Apple as well. So I'm actually going to do. Oh, it's using a Samba share as well. So never mind. All right, we'll just do the Windows share. And I will do, I'm going to see, so as you see, I have a window here for TrueNAS. FreeNAS is going to be the original uh, server that I have. TrueNAS is going to be a different one. So we're going to go ahead and just open that guy up. See if it'll let me connect. So... I don't think it's gonna, you know what, I didn't set up a user. So let's actually do that. Let's just allow guest access for now. Yeah. All right, so let's just try that again. We'll open this guy up, click on TrueNAS. Let's see if we can go ahead and just log in. There it goes. All right, and then we should be able to go ahead and, well, for example, let's see if I can get the iDrag license on here. Yeah, so I don't have permission to do that because I don't have full property or full access to it, but that's okay. I can at least see the drive. That's what I was looking for here. So that's basically it here, guys. So go ahead and check updates just in case. Of course, no updates are available, so we can actually go in here, set up some of the settings if we wanted to, go ahead and tell it to go to the retro logo, any of that. I don't want to go ahead and set up any groups. Honestly, this is really a temporary experiment. I wanted to show you guys uh, how to get TrueNAS Core installed on a Dell server, and that's what we did. You even see the storage pool here. It is ready to go. Everything is online. There's no errors on the disk, and of course, there's no space being used. But anyway, that's it, guys. If you did like this video, definitely hit the thumbs up button if you would like. If not, hit the thumbs down button. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely subscribe to the, the channel. Be part of the Squap Squad, as my friends call it. And hit the bell icon, of course, if you haven't already. And Keep tuned for some more videos like this in the future. My name is Craig with Squappy's Videos. I do hope you have a good one. I hope you enjoyed this video overall. And have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye.